Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over an exam um, two examples on how to solve natural logarithmic equations. But before we go ahead and get started, let's write down some of the properties that we're going to be using um, in the problem solving process. So properties. All right, so um, number one, <clears throat> the first property is the product property of log natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm of x, y is equal to the natural logarithm of x plus the natural logarithm of y. Second property is known as a quotient property. So the natural logarithm of x over y is equal to the natural logarithm of x minus the natural logarithm of y. Formula 3 <coughs> is your um, exponent property. So the natural logarithm of a to the x is equal to x times the natural logarithm of a. Formula 4 is known as the inverse property. The natural logarithm of e to the x is the same thing as e to the natural logarithm of x. And these two are both equal to x. What is happening here is that the ln and the e's are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. All right, so these are the uh, four properties we're going to be using for the problem solving process um, for the two problems we're looking at today. OK, so instructions for the examples are first to solve and check. All right, solve and check. Problem number one. We have the equation, the natural logarithm of x minus the natural logarithm of 2x minus 5 is equal to 5. OK? All right, so to solve um, natural logarithmic equations, it's just like solving regular log equations. You want to condense the logarithms first and then eliminate the logarithm after condensation. All right, so let's uh, condense these two logs. To condense these two, we're going to use formula 2, which is a quotient property. So the difference of two logarithms is the same thing as the quotient of the two numbers you're subtracting. Okay, so this is going to become the natural logarithm of the first term goes in the numerator divided by 2x minus 5. All right. And that equals 5. So we can see that these two logs have been condensed into one um, logarithmic expression right here. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to eliminate this using the inverse property. Remember, um, the base of ln is e. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two big e's on both sides. So a big e on the left and a big e on the right. And then we're going to exponentiate both sides of the equation using e as the basis, all right? So now we're going to have a little ln of x over 2x minus 5 equals e to a little 5. On the left side, the e and the ln cancel each other out. So you'll be left with x over 2x minus 5 equals e to the fifth power. Now to get... Um, we're gonna, what we're going to do next is we're going to cross multiply or multiply both sides by 2x minus 5. If we do that, we're going to have x equals 2xe. Let's, let me not skip the steps. I'm writing as a product first and then I'll distribute so you don't get confused. So we have e to the fifth times 2x minus 5. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to distribute this e to the fifth to these two terms. Um, and then when we do that, we're going to have x equals 2x e to the fifth minus 5 e to the fifth. Now, this is where a lot of people get stuck or confused as to how to solve for x. So what you do here is basically collect all the terms with x's to one side and then get x isolated, okay, by factoring. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 2x e to the fifth from both sides. And then that gives me x minus 2x e to the fifth equals negative 5 e to the fifth power. Now you notice that x is coming on these two terms, so I can factor out the x. So I'll be left with 1 minus 2e to the fifth equals negative 5 e to the fifth. Finally, to get um, x isolated, I'll divide both sides by 1 minus 2 e to the fifth. 1 minus 2 e to the fifth, and then 1 minus 2 e to the fifth. All right, on the right, left side, we can see that the x's cancel out. I mean, the 1 minus 2 e to the fifth cancel out, so you're going to be left with 
x equals negative 5 e to the fifth over 1 minus 2 e to the fifth. Okay? Now the question is, does this answer make sense? Does it work? We know that the argument of a natural logarithmic function must be positive or else um, you're going to have a domain error problem. Okay, so is this a positive or a negative number? By spectrum, we can clearly see that this is positive because um, e is like around 2.7. If you raise it to the fifth power and multiply by 2, it's definitely going to be bigger than 1. So the difference will be negative, and when you divide two negative values, you have a positive number. All right, so since this term is positive, we're not going to have any issues with domain restrictions or violations in the, in the check. To um, make sure that our assumptions are correct, let's go ahead and use our calculator to find what the approximate value of this expression is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's enter it. We're going to enter negative 5, negative 5 e to the fifth, that divided by 1 minus 2 e to the fifth. All right. So let's see what the approximate answer is. It's approximately 2.51. Okay. So we can clearly see that it's a positive value. So um, there isn't any domain violation here, 2.51. Okay. So what we're going to do now, those are our answers, is we're going to do a check to make sure that our answer is in fact correct. Okay. So we're going to plug this back into the original problem and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and do the check. All right, we want to make sure our check is exact, so we're going to be using the exact result as opposed to the approximate result. So um, remember that our original problem is ln of x minus ln of 2x minus 5 is equal to 5. So we're going to be plugging our answer into these two x values right here, OK? So the question is, is the natural logarithm of negative 5 over 1 minus 2e to the fifth minus the natural logarithm of 2, let's do that again, minus the natural logarithm of, um, instead of 2x, we have 2 times the answer we got, which is negative 5, so let's say e to the fifth, negative 5e to the fifth over 1 minus 2 e to the fifth minus 5 is it equal to 5 that's the question okay so what i'm going to do is i see this fraction right here i'm going to extract it and simplify it as much as i can and then i'll put it back in okay so let's take this um the argument for the second logarithmic um, expression and simplify it so that is 2 times negative 5 e to the fifth over 1 minus 2 e to the fifth minus 5. Okay, let's simplify this. So first thing I'm going to do is distribute this 2 to this term, and then we're going to find the LCD. Okay, so if, I, if you look at these two denominators, the LCD is going to be 1 minus 2 e to the fifth. So um, let's distribute it first, and then we'll find the LCD next. So when we distribute, we're going to have negative 10 e to the fifth over 1 minus 2 e to the fifth minus 5 over 1. So to make the denominators identical, I'm going to multiply this by 1 minus 2 e to the fifth on the numerator and the denominator so we do not change the problem. So now this yields negative 10 e to the wrong color. So that yields um, negative 10 e to the fifth minus, you can distribute this negative 5 to these two terms. So you're going to have um, negative uh, 5 plus 10 e to the fifth over the identical denominator. So divided by um, well, 1 minus 2 e to the fifth, okay? And then what happens here is that uh, these two numbers cancel out, and then you're left with negative 5 over 
1 minus 2e to the fifth power. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reinsert this back into where it came from, right? Put it back in here. This entire uh, expression is now going to be this, 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 this value right here. All right, so let's go ahead and plug, plug it in and then we're going to simplify. So what does our problem look like now that we have this angle simplified to some extent? It's going to look like a phone. It's going to be um, the natural logarithm of negative 5e to the fifth over 1 minus 2e to the fifth. That minus the natural logarithm of negative 5 over 1 minus 2e to the fifth. Is it equal to 5? Okay. Now we're going to apply the quotient property of logarithm again. If you have a difference from logs, it's the same thing as the, uh, the logarithm of the quotient of the two terms you're subtracting. Okay, so this will now become the natural logarithm of negative 5e to the fifth over 1 minus 2e to the fifth times, I'm sorry, divided by, because minus is divided, divided by negative 5 over. 1 minus 2e to the fifth. And the question is, um, is that equal to 5? So how do you multiply divide fractions? You multiply the first by the reciprocal of the second, right? So you have the natural logarithm of negative 5e to the fifth over 1 minus 2e to the fifth times 1 minus 2e to the fifth over negative 5 and the question is is it equal to 5 all right so if you notice here 1 minus 2 e to the fifth and 1 minus 2 e to the fifth cancel out negative 5 and negative 5 cancel out so we're going to be left with the expression is a natural logarithm of e to the fifth is it equal to 5 now using the inverse property that we talked about earlier we can see that the ln and the e's cancel each other out so we're going to have the statement is 5 equal to 5, and the answer is yes. So we're confident that our answer is in fact correct. All right, let's take a look at our problem 2. So problem 2, we are to solve and also check um, the logarithmic equation ln of 4x squared plus the natural logarithm of 4 equals 2. Okay, now remember the procedure for solving logarithmic equations. You condense, if you have multiple logarithms, and then you eliminate. You condense using the properties and then eliminate using the inverse. All right, how do we condense the product of two logarithmic expressions? We have the, I'm sorry, the sum. If you have the sum, it's the same thing as the product of the, of the argument, okay? So it's going to become the natural logarithm of 4x squared times 4 equals 2. Okay, let's multiply this argument here. You're going to have the natural logarithm of 16x squared is equal to 2. Now we have it nicely condensed. We're now going to eliminate. Since the basis is e, we're going to put the big E on the left and the big E on the right. And then we're going to have a little ln of 16x squared equals e to a little 2. Okay? All right, so on the left side, using the inverse property of logarithms, we know that these two cancel out. So we're going to have 16x squared equals e to the second power. Now what we're going to do next is uh, isolate x squared first before we root it. So to do that, to accomplish that, we'll divide both sides by 16. Okay, so divide this by 16, divide that by 16, and they will have x squared equals e squared over 16. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides, root the left and the right. So on the left side, we're going to have the absolute value of x um, equals square root of e squared is e over 4. All right, so this can be written as, since this is absolute value, you can write this as x equals 
plus or minus e over 4. Okay, so there goes your answer. You have you have two solutions, basically. All right, so now it's obvious that we, we're not going to run into any domain issues here because you're squaring the variable. And you know, the square of a positive and negative number are always positive, so you never have a negative logarithmic argument for the first term. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our check to see if um, our results are in fact correct. All right, so let's do the check. So what we're going to do is basically plug in this answer into our equation. So we have the natural logarithm of 4 times plus or minus e over 4 squared plus the natural logarithm of 4. Is it equal to 2? That's a question. Is this equal to 2? All right, so let's... Uh, Simplify that square term first and then see if we can condense it further. All right, so this is going to be the natural logarithm of 4. Now, when you square plus or minus, it's just plus. Square the top is e squared. Square the bottom is 16. All right, so the logarithm of this product plus the natural logarithm of 4 is it equal to 2? Now, you notice 4 goes here once, 4 goes here four times. So is the natural logarithm of e squared over 4 plus the natural logarithm of 4, is it equal to 2? Now we're going to use the product property to condense this because we know that the product of two logarithms is the same thing as the sum of the log of the factors. So this can be expressed as a natural logarithm of e squared over 4 times 4. Is this equal to 2? All right, so if, we know, if you notice, these fours divide out. So the question is, is the natural logarithm of e squared equal to 2? And we know that that's the case because ln and e cancel out, and then you're going to be left with the statement is 2 equal to 2, and the answer is yes. So we're confident that our answer, e equals plus or minus 4, is in fact the solution to the original logarithmic equation. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, please post a comment to let me know what you think. Click like if you liked it. And feel free to share with your friends via your respective social networking programs. Thanks again for watching. More clips come from Have a wonderful day.